This is Raymond Rowe, and you are listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. All right, and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for that big, big moment of the week. It's the big question with Papa Lunchbox. Take it away. Hi, everybody. It is time for the big question. Uh, and uh, the big question this week has been it's been plaguing my mind all week long. So this year at the Royal Rumble, a lot of people were upset. And the source of that being upset was that Daniel Bryan didn't do so well in the Royal Rumble. Uh-huh. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, last year with the Royal Rumble, a lot of people were upset. And I think the source of that was because they thought Daniel Bryan was going to come out and he didn't. We can take away, I think, the the unifying theory from the internet is that everybody loves Royal Rumble. I mean, (laughs) everybody loves Daniel Bryan and they (laughs) want him to win. (laughs) My question to the assembled panel is if Daniel Bryan was not a factor, if Daniel Bryan did not exist, would we still have this trouble? Um, I'm going to say yes. Because I feel like there were a few other people who could have had a better story going into WrestleMania against Brock Lesnar. I think Dolph Ziggler is one of them. I think Bray Wyatt is one of them. I think Rusev is one of them. I think Dean Ambrose is one of them. Like I, I think Roman Reigns made more sense when the Shield was together against... Uh, the authority, when they had turned on the authority. And also because no one wants to see Batista. I think this year, I think even Roman Reigns could have been okay. It was just the way they did it. But I don't think I don't think Daniel Bryan necessarily is the big factor. I think the only reason a lot of people think he's the big factor is because he never lost the belt. Do you think they would find someone else to rally behind? Yeah, Dolph Ziggler, easily. I mean, right. he was the guy who saved Survivor Series. True, true. Matt Carlins? Yeah, I'm kind of with Mike on this one. The internet will always find its next darling. Um, so even if Daniel Bryan had retired at the middle of next year, God forbid, the internet would have moved on to Ambrose or Cesaro. You know, I think you're right that Ziggler was basically positioned like Bryan – until Brian got back, um, he could have fallen right into that spot too. And, you know, honestly, there will come a point. I know it's unbelievable at this point, but there will come a point where the internet is done with Daniel Bryan and we will move on to somebody new. I don't know who that's going to be, but we're going to move on eventually. <laughs> it's all the, the internet, the internet love for a wrestler is always just a breakup waiting to happen. And uh, someday that day will come. It's going to be Mojo Raleigh. It's going to be Mojo Raleigh. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. By the way, uh, Mojo Raleigh just endorsing our friend of the show, Jock Sampson, on Twitter earlier tonight. So That's, so how, he started, he that's how he started, Sorg. Chew on that for you a see moment. I told you he was all right. Chew on that for a moment. Um, <laughs> what do we got here? Dan, uh, how's that pizza? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just getting started with this bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Got, Wait, how did you get sliced on Broadway? Sword, did you send him pizza? Oh man. Did you send him transcontinental pizza? Transcontinental. They actually do have a have a, a branch in Scotland. Damn it. <laughs> we don't talk about it much on the show, but Broadway Scotland. You're, yeah, Broadway Broadway Avenue, Scotland. <laughs> There's one Broadway Avenue, right? <laughs> Dan, Dan, do you have any thoughts between shoes? Sorry? Do you have any thoughts on the big question between shoes here? Yeah, I, I don't think Roman, um, sorry, I don't think Daniel Bryan's is anything to do with the problem for Roman Reigns. If anything, I think that's a WWE led storyline. Um, you know, like him getting thrown out of the rumble early and then the cameras zooming in on him and being like, Oh, it's a surprise. Obviously the crowd was gonna be down on that. But if it wasn't even in the rumble, the, the that Royal Rumble crowd would have booed the crap out of Roman Reigns. I said it long before the rumble started. It's it's nothing to do with uh, Brian not winning. It's to do with the the machine getting behind uh, Roman Reigns, and we all knew that. We all knew that long before the Rumble even came. We knew that before Brian came back, right? If Brian hadn't come back at all, Roman still goes on to win it, and and he gets booed to death because the fans don't want to see the next John Cena getting pushed. They want to see a Dolph Ziggler 
of somebody like that. They don't, you know, they, um, so yeah, I, I agree with what the guys have said before. I don't think it was, it was Daniel Bryan as such. I, I don't, I don't even think the fans was necessarily as behind Bryan as what they could have been. You know, it, it felt more like they just wanted to hit on him. Mm-hmm. Certainly, certainly. Um, before I forget you, I'm sorry I forgot LB last week. Uh, LB, what, what's your thoughts before I go to uh, uh, the rest of the guys here? Uh, I feel like um, I feel like Daniel Bryan was a factor to a certain degree because they got a taste of him. Uh, what they got a taste of what they wanted when he had the title and everything like that. And I and I agree. Um, the fact that he didn't get his rematch was part of it as well. Um, but I mean, I, I also agree that um, the internet is always going to find something to hate and something to complain about. Um, so I I don't know. I don't know. I feel like uh, Daniel Bryan is a is a rallying cry. It's it unifies opinions. Um, more so than if, you know, they didn't have him to hold up as a shiny example as the kind of the opposite of Roman Reigns and the opposite of John Cena. You know what I mean? I don't know. All right. Uh, Bobby F. J. Town's with us uh, at Bobby F. Bobby F. J. Town on the Twitters. Uh, what, what is, what's your answer to the big question here? I think um, since the crowd was like, they were behind Daniel Bryan. But once he got eliminated, I think they they focused on Dolph Ziggler and uh, Dean Ambrose and even, you know, like somebody said, even Bray Wyatt. And it was the way that they were eliminated that I think ticked fans off even more. And, like, like Dean was the last hope. And when he was eliminated, everybody knew that, you know, Roman Reigns was going to win, you know. But, uh... And then Rusev coming in at the end was like, you can fix this, you can fix this, and they didn't fix it. So I think everybody was just mad that, like, Roman Reigns, everybody, he was the odds-on favorite to win it, like, from the get-go from last year. And this year, you know, yeah. By the he way, won. this just in, and Bobby, if you can drop out so we can try to get Riz in here for this. Okay. Um, we did get a clarification. Uh, Zach Gallen says, nope. He was not in a Royal Rumble ever. So. Huh. I wonder what the hell I'm thinking of. I don't know. I, I think you're just thinking of the fact that I joked about Zach Gallon being in the Rumble so much. That's true. That, that's possibility. Because I said if he came out with one leg, there's no way he could be eliminated. And then you like dreamt. If he, if he came out without the prosthetic leg and, no, and maybe, like, I don't know, sent it home to his folks, there's no way he could be eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> Eamon, Eamon uh, is joining us. His, his, he he found his thoughts in earlier, of course. Uh, Eamon, what, what's your thoughts on the big question? Um, personally, I feel that with the... I, I definitely agree with Bobby in the sense that you can tell with the crowd that once Daniel Bryan was eliminated, they were trying to latch onto something else. Um, I think that was kind of one of the biggest factors. And it was the reason, I think, why Daniel Bryan was so you know, big of a factor. I do think without Daniel Bryan, in a world without Daniel Bryan, I think, yeah, we would have had a different scenario. I don't know if Roman Reigns would have gotten as over uh, as people would um, have expected. But, yeah, I do think it was a big factor. I think Daniel Bryan, and I, I kind of disagree with what um, uh, Matt said about how, you know, sort of indie wrestling fans or, or internet fans kind of, you know, latch on to a person and then, you know, get rid of them. I think Daniel Bryan's one of the exceptions to that. I think he's somebody that people have supported and, and have appreciated since the very beginning. Um, and I think he's kind of one of those enigmas that, that, that comes with that. So I, I think he was a big factor in, mm-hmm. in what happened. I, I, I want to just clarify that uh, I, I don't mean to indicate that the, uh, that the hardcore – Internet fans would ever turn their backs on Daniel Bryan. Um, <laughs> even though I'm sure some of them might come up with a reason someday, God forbid. But uh, I, I just think that, like, um, mm. when, when 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 you put all your efforts to see your guy succeed and he finally does, you can't help but start to look around and be like, okay, who are we going to get next? Who are we going to get to the top of the card next? Um, and I think kind of like once Bryan reached the pinnacle and won at the main event at WrestleMania. That was kind of a sense I got. I was like, okay, who are the fans going to find next to, to kind of latch on to and 
be their guy. Yeah, I get to that. Zack Ryder. Also, <laughs> <laughs> also joining us for the big question is the Riz at the E Riz on the Twitter. You can check out his new shirt. Uh, if you check out our Spreadshirt uh, shop, we got a link over at SolarTronMedia.com. It's, like, it's, it's like this. Be it's like this Riz. Sword. You can be it's Riz. Eyes. Check out that. Buy the T-shirt. Support the I show. I need a stunt double sword. If y- yes, you do. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> Especially, I just imagine you because we talked about silver sneakers the other day, and you just like have a pantomime of doing the so called silver sneakers. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that, that's a different podcast. I'm sorry. sorry. Anyways, I'm sorry. What's your answer to the big question? Um, I agree with Matt Garland. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it just seems like no matter like in this like, for the past two years, we have been backing one horse or or we've been backing a lot of horses and when they don't win and when they get eliminated by one of the other 30 guys we get angry and upset mm-hmm. and that's and and this is why I'm going to say right now Roman Reigns is getting this push kind of in due part to last year's Royal Rumble and then he, and then just like Matt said, whenever that happened, whenever he got that push, he started to find out that he was the guy. And everybody started to find out he was the guy. So to, to the point is, um, after that, you know he's going to win the Rumble. But you want somebody else to be there. And if Daniel Bryan wasn't there... Dolph Ziggler was there, Rusev was there, and everybody was starting to back Rusev. It's, it's that nice little s- circle of life where now it's if cool Rusev life. was <laughs> going to be a thing and wanting to be a good push, they're not going to like that either. They're going to find something else to hate, and that that's just me. I don't know if it's anybody else. If it's It's just to the point where I can't. Like the Royal Rumble is supposed to be enjoyed, correct? Right. To in, in, theory, in theory, not to interrupt. I'm sorry. In theory, any wrestling event should be enjoyed. Yes. Yes. It, in theory, but for the past two years, it hasn't because our guy A wasn't in it, and B didn't win it. So. It's just to the point where it's just like, okay, here comes Roman Reigns now going to win this. So there's always going to be – this is the Royal Rumble we're talking about. There's 30 other guys in there. Somebody's going to pick somebody different. And that's why – nobody's going to be happy. Not everybody's going to be happy. And it just so happens to be that a lot of people aren't happy. All right. I think we got everybody here, right? Right? Am I right? Mm-hmm. We're good. We're good. Mm-hmm. Um, Sword, did you answer? I think Sword? I did. I think I was one of the first. Yeah. Probably. Wait. No. No, I didn't. I didn't answer. Wait, what Martin do I think? Sword. If we didn't have Daniel Bryan, no, I, I'm really. I, I, I agree with that. I think we're just going to pick somebody else. I, I think. I think if it wasn't Brian, it would have been a Seth Rollins or a Ooh. Dean Ambrose. I'm surprised we're not as pissed Dean Ambrose isn't getting more than he does. But he did main event of pay-per-view or two recently. So Not all of us can be Jen Carlin, so I know. <laughs> I know. He, he's going to get fired next week. That's yeah. right. He's going to get fired next week. All right, guys. We, and again, for this, um, if you, uh, let us know. Would, would, would we have these problems? Let us know on Twitter. Hashtag uh, WMS Big Question. Uh, would we have these problems if, it, if uh, we didn't have Daniel Bryan? Where we have the Roman Reigns problem, where we have the reaction problems of the last two uh, Royal Rumbles, for instance. Uh, hashtag WMS Big Question this week for a chance to win. You ready for this, guys? You ready for this, guys? Oh. Best of CM Punk Volume 1. Oh, shit. Oh, there it is. So can guy? I win? You can I, no, you're not allowed to win. You can, Sorry, you, you can participate. Do I win? No, no. Chris, it's Sam Punk taking on Chris Hero, Super Hentai, Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles, Jimmy Vegas, Sterling James Keenan, who might be somebody called Corey Graves now, who uh, might have just been at Royal Rumble, actually, uh, as a commentator. 
surprisingly. Uh, go check that out. And uh, for this last week's response, last week's question was, what went wrong with Roman Reigns' push and how can WWE fix it? We had some responses. At Yaceon, uh says, uh, Reigns' push went south when fans stopped cheering for dudes Vince McMahon thinks is hot. Okay. Okay. Uh, Barbara out there. Uh, there go different ways on that. Now one, I think okay. I think Barbara is is a little bit uh, skewed, but but I agree with her. Uh, her 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 uh, uh, Twitter name is Justice Reigns twenty five. It's spelled <laughs> that way, guys. Uh, but she says uh, they did the Royal Rumble in Philly. That was the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, crispy uh, Kareem fifteen. Crispy Kareem is his name on here. Uh, I see what he did there. Um, I think. <laughs> God, so <laughs> well, when you oh, say it out man. loud, it makes Same more wow. sense in your head. Okay, I think. Sorry, think your, your reaction was so happy that you figured that out. Yeah. <laughs> Late. I need another one of these now. rehabs going on here. Um, he says, "I think WWE Vince McMahon Triple H needs to bring back the World Heavyweight Title and have Roman Reigns go for that title at WrestleMania 31. Ooh, yeah, bury idea. him at the beginning of the show like you did Edge and Del Rio that one time or whatever that was. Um, hey, yeah, they, that's what they do. That, that was their switch up. Like, oh, let's just have him do World Heavyweight, not really man. Uh, and then we just did the thing, right? Dude. So, uh, or for Christian." Tell you what, this week, this week, since we only had three responses, all three of those guys are getting a copy of uh, RW, or, not, IWC's, sorry, sorry, uh, the IWC's Reloaded, uh, just featuring, of course, uh, uh, Colin Delaney, who is going to be on a future Indie Mayhem show soon, uh, the extremely cute wrestler from ECW, taking on Tommy Dreamer, uh, reliving his feud, and a very surprise uh, uh, kind of participation by uh, Tommy Dreamer. Um, in the main event, actually. Also, uh, Virgil is on there, mm. if that really does it for you. And other great guys, friends, great guys, friends of the shows like RJ Style, the recently, uh, I guess, redebuting uh, big time thing in, in our uh, Ring of Honor. Uh, Dalton Castle is a part of this as well. Great photography there by our friend Daniel Hooven, we talked to on the Indie Mayhem show as well. Uh, but go check that out. If you didn't win, you can go check that out at pittsburghwrestling.com. Uh, we got a lot of stuff going on over there, including the IWC's Reloaded. Recent releases like um, uh, uh, like uh, RWA's Uprising 7 featuring Sanjay Dutt and uh, uh, Mickey Knuckles in a mixed tag match against uh, Shane Andrews and Jesse Bell Smothers. Um, a lot of fun there uh, uh, happening. And, uh, great shows coming up. Um, there's sh- and also a lot of these are on Smart Mark uh a video as well video on demand you can look up iwc and maybe some other stuff and some new releases coming out very shortly for vicious outcast wrestling um a lot of fun happening including davy richards is a part of that i know um and more recent shows with uh guys like rhino guys like uh tomosa champa um so look for those releases uh pittsburghwrestling.com and indie wrestling.us support uh indie wrestling and support the show so with that uh this is the time uh and mike just just give me a couple minutes i i just just this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com